So let's see if we can get working AC on the Lincoln. I'm gonna fast forward you a lot on the AC here. Uh, compressor locked up and I don't know if it froze up or what, but uh, I eventually realized, well, I ordered a new compressor and I don't think I needed to. Um, Cause new compressor did the same thing. And I did put a new expansion valve on it and Finally, you know, I went through and did some diagnostic work and found out that the POA valve, not something I'm used to, but this is a POA valve, uh, was flaky. It was, it would work and not work and it just, oh, it's got some oil in it, but it was flaky and that was our issue. Well, I'm hoping it's our issue because I decided to go a route, you know, you can get those rebuilt and I may end up getting this one rebuilt. We've done nothing here that we can't undo, but my cheapest and quickest route, because I need this thing working in a week, is, uh, was to go with this. This is from, oh man, I just got all of my instructions. This is from Old Air Products and this is converts it basically to a pressure cycling system. So the POA valve, what it does is it maintains, basically maintains 30 PSI in the evaporator, you know, for optimal cooling and to keep it from freezing up. That's basically what it does. Uh, mine was not holding. Um, it, sometimes it would, sometimes it wouldn't, sometimes, it, you know, it just, it was very flaky. And I messed with it, messed with it, couldn't get it to work. Like I said, you can get them rebuilt, but, um, and we may go that route, but a brand new one's like $300. And I paid $115 for this setup. And we'll see how it works. Um, if it works well and I'm happy with it, we'll probably leave it like this. So, uh, did pull up so if you, we look this is a uh something something 2551 model and i decided to go with the r12 fittings instead of 134 since we're not running 134 this is a 50-2551 and if we look at our little chart here you know this is a lincoln continental I made a mess of these um so Lincoln, 74 to 75 Lincoln, 50-2551. And then Mark 5 for 76, or Mark 4 would be a 2552. You know, yada, yada, yada. And so, yeah. Well, the issue I had, so originally this POA valve was sitting in there like this basically so this is your liquid this is a liquid return line uh, it like scavenges oil from the bottom of the evaporator and sends it back through the system and then this is a uh this one here is for the uh expansion valve it's so with it positioned like that uh with basically you know the liquid on the side expansion valve on the bottom it put the pressure sensor sticking straight out the side which was going to run into our hood hinge here so the only way i could make this work was to rotate this around ideally you know i probably would have put it more straight up but that would have put this more straight up and but it would have been this less in a bind but i felt like it was going to stick up too high and i could have put angled uh terminals on it or something you know not use this plug but ultimately i decided just to kick it over a little bit this way to get this laying down some 
And yeah, this is what we've got. So we're gonna need to wire this up. I've already run a wire over here. I need to trim off the excess. But this is running over here to tie into this switch. And it comes over here. I'm pulling a vacuum while I'm doing all this. It comes over here to our wire for our compressor, which is right here. This is the uh, clutch wire. And I just basically snipped it out of the wire loom. It actually had been repaired and spliced back together. So I just undid the splice that they did. And we're sending that wire all the way over now to that pressure switch and then coming all the way back over to the compressor. So we basically cut that wire and tied onto one end and tied on the other end. And they're, they're flowing through that pressure switch. And that's, that's the only wiring thing you have to do. So I just put some loom around and they include a lot of wire, but not enough. But I pre-wired this while I was waiting for that to come in. Like I said, I'm I'm running out of time. So anything I could pick away at, I did, which was running the wire. And so uh, we're gonna come over here somewhere and splice those together. Uh, I've got my stuff over here to do it. And uh, we'll have that pressure switch ready to go. Now we'll need to bypass it to get the clutch to run. We'll just need to connect the two wires together uh, while we're charging the refrigerant because, you know, it's not gonna have enough pressure to kick the switch on. Cool thing about this switch is it's an adjustable switch. So you can adjust the pressure for 134 or R12. I'm running a Viro safe in here. So I'm gonna leave it adjusted to what it's at. I really don't know what it should be at. We, I guess we'll figure that out. Um, I may reach out to EnviroSafe and just ask them and see if they can tell me, you know, what it should cycle on and off at. But I think it's set up per, per the instructions right now for 134, which to me is kind of odd that they would, you know, if you're ordering it, because you can order this thing for R12 R or R134 and like this, see, 50-2551 R12 refrigerant. But when you look at it, let's see, R12 only. It may be necessary to adjust the screw between the male electrical terminals of the pressure switch, one fourth to a half turn, so the clutch cycles off at 27 to 30 PSI. So, I don't know. We'll see what it does on the gauges, see how it, acts but right now let me do this wiring like I, said, I was just trying to hurry up and get this thing back together i'm not crazy about this I, i'm okay with everything i think except for this it's kind of a stretch um but it's not too much of a stretch you know we're not bending it too tight um and then I'm hoping this really doesn't matter on this, which it was kind of on the side. Now it's on the top. Hopefully it still pulls the oil up and over. I think it will. But I don't think that should be a problem. So, yeah. Not the best, but, you know, had I had thought about this, I guess, I might would have looked at the 2552 just to see if it looked like it might orientate everything a little better. I really feel like that's probably about the only place the pressure switch can go unless you had had it straight out the bottom. That might be, actually that's probably the best option is if it was sticking straight down, but um, yeah. Oh well, it is what it is. We're gonna run with it. I'm probably gonna slip a piece of uh, heater hose around here and then just try to tie wrap this clamp around it. it it's really just supported by here uh, can't really get this clamp around it anymore and I don't want to destroy this clamp so we're just gonna kind of leave it as is like I said in case we decide to go back with the POA valve I may send this thing in and get rebuilt I just needed something for this trip but I guess if it works we're gonna leave it So we're sitting in the Lincoln 
I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, we are actually back from our road trip. Uh, it's actually a little bit, it's been a while since we got back. I'm behind on videos, but realized I did not wrap this video up um, and let y'all know how, you know, the AC worked and everything. I did uh, get it charged up and worked, blows cold and uh, no real issues with it other than it's chewing up AC belts. So I got to dig into that. Uh, I have a little bit of a concern with, you know, that compressor is, it's a beast to turn. You know, it is not an efficient compressor. And so, you know, it, it puts a lot of drag on those belts. And I guess a little bit of my fear is that, you know, now that it cycles, you know, if you're cruising down the freeway at 2,500 RPMs or whatever. I don't, I don't have a tax. I don't really know how many RPMs, but say you're cruising at 2,500 RPMs and that compressor kicks on, you know, that's, that's quite a shock to that belt. And so my fear is, you know, that's where it's chewing the belts up, you know, is when it's cycling on and off going down the freeway. It may not be, I may have some other issues. So I guess that's really the only complaint I could have, and I don't even know if that's a valid complaint because I don't know if it's if the if it is the culprit. So, you know, like I said, originally this thing would have regulated pressure with the compressor on 100% of the time if the AC is on. So if you have the AC on on this car originally, the compressor would be running. 100% of the time and you know it, it that valve would regulate the pressure without cycling the compressor if that makes sense now we've got a pressure switch on it and so you know it will cycle the compressor off and on as needed to maintain that pressure now you know in theory that should be the more efficient system as far as you know if you want to go by mileage or something because then you're not running the compressor all the time so i like the idea of it and i have a feeling i've got some other issues as far as the belts go you know maybe the water pump pulley uh maybe i need to clean the belt groove better on it you know this thing sat for so many years so we're gonna do that and you know hopefully it seemed like more of the belt shavings or whatever you want to call it were more um on the water pump and not around the ac compressor so that would lead me to believe that it wasn't the compressor cycling that was causing the issue so we're definitely gonna you know clean the crank pulley it's a new compressor so the compressor pulley is really nice uh and we're gonna clean the water pump pulley you know with a wire brass wire wheel on my bench camera cut off uh clean those real good on the wire wheel and the bench grinder brass wire wheel just get those really really nice and maybe that'll take care of our issue so you know i that's all i can really say ac worked great um i did it doesn't blow the hardest you know if that's could be my complaint so in the really hot areas it just doesn't blow hard enough. Now, I got it home and I started looking into that. And what I found, I thought, well, a couple things. I started to clean the evaporator core, um, you know, thinking that maybe it was partially plugged, which it was pretty dirty. So that could be part of the issue. But the bottom of the housing of it, there is a, uh, like a plate that goes from the evaporator core housing to the firewall and that plate is rusted out and so there is a big hole and the it's not in the evaporator housing but it's it's where the evaporator is and like i said it's just a metal plate that connects that evaporator housing to you know the firewall and it's probably about a baseball size hole right there so 
you know, that definitely was probably leaking a lot of air, you know, as the blower is blowing across, it's probably blowing out that hole a lot. So I think that's probably our biggest issue. So we're gonna have to address that. So that's all I've really got. Um, I've, yeah, I've got this thing torn apart. Y'all will see that coming up. So I don't want to show y'all too much under the hood or anything, but um, yeah, kind of a long outro here, but kind of wanted to give y'all my review, I guess. Otherwise, you know, other than the belt chewing, you know, it was fine. I, I could kind of feel it every once in a while on the freeway. I could tell when the AC cut on, you kind of feel that drag or when it cuts off, you know, kind of freeing up a little horsepower. Um, so, you know, but really not that bad. So it'll probably stay as long as I can make sure I don't chew up belts, which like I said, I don't think it's this issue. I think it's one of my pulleys. So, oh, sorry, lot to say there. Um, there is a, there's going to be some videos coming out and I don't, I need to review back through, but took a road trip on this thing, in this thing. And so those videos are coming out. There's probably one or two more videos before we get into the road trip video. I need to look and see. Um, I didn't video a whole lot on the road trip, but I did do some and I will, you know, I just tried to enjoy the road trip uh, and not do too much video. But I did do some and we'll throw some pictures in there. Stuff like that, and y'all can see where all we went. So it was, it was quite the trip. Um, so that's coming up probably in a couple of weeks. You should see those videos. So thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've converted one of these AC systems before and how it worked for you. Um, like I said, I probably wouldn't have done it if I wasn't on such a time crunch. I would have probably tried to put it back original, but I was down to less than a week before we were leaving, and I wanted AC. So there was no way I could get anything else. That conversion <laughs> valve with the pressure switch was on Amazon, and so I could get it in two days. So that was the fastest way to try to get this AC working. And so that's, that's the route I took. And I think we'll, we'll stay with it as long as it <laughs> continues to work well, which it seems okay. Anyway, rambling again, stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed. Lots more to come on this car if you're enjoying these videos.